Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Tom Bunn, a principal on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is AI and machine learning in ag. On today's call, we're joined by Ben Scott Robinson, co-founder and CEO of Small Robot Company. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this webinar because you are some of the smartest, most talented people at Small Robot's market. You are potential customers for Small Robot Company's products and services. You've built a similar company or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that Small Robot Company may face. A few process comments while, the, while uh, or before the uh, webinar gets kicked off. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is provide information to help small robot company find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. And finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I'm pleased to introduce Ben Scott Robinson, co-founder and CEO of Small Robot Company. Thank you very much for joining us today, Ben. Thank you very much for asking me along, Tom. I really appreciate it. And thank you everybody for, for taking the time to uh, check out Small Robot Company. So um, my name is Ben Scott Robinson, uh, and about um, six years ago, uh, I um, was introduced to my business partner, Sam, uh, and we started on this journey of answering the problems of the farmers of some of the world's biggest crops. But my background before that is I spent nearly 25 years building user-centered tech innovation, particularly focusing on a precision location-based data. And you know, in that time, I both worked for agencies and have two startup exits under my belt. But since the start of Small Robot Company, Sam and I have spent a long time talking to farmers about what they need and really strived to deliver to answer those needs. We started the business actually by spending six months interviewing hundreds of farmers to understand what they think about their current systems, uh, the, the, the environment that they find themselves in and the changes that they wanted to see. And what they told us is that cereal farming, uh, particularly wheat farming, is hitting really difficult times. It's ultimately suffering a triple threat. Unstable weather is making global production unpredictable. And both COVID and the current tragedy in Ukraine has shown that costs of production can very quickly spiral to make farming economically unsustainable. And finally, through decades of heavy tilling with massive machinery, has exerted for many people a huge toll on the most fundamental part of crop growing, the soil. So answering these problems for the world's biggest crops is a unique challenge. You know, it's one that requires a different focus from other crops. Uh, a solution needs to show a significant ROI on a low value crop. Uh, it needs to be able to uh, understand a very densely populated field while covering a lot of ground at the same time. And it needs to remove weight from the field, both to stop compaction on the soil, but also to be able to work in conditions that would leave tractors axle deep in mud. So to fix this, something fundamental has to change. So what we're doing is using lightweight autonomous vehicles to provide a near real-time view of each crop plant as it grows through the season, and then deliver precise and timely interventions to make that plant achieve its full potential. So I'd like to introduce you to Tom, Dick, Harry, and Wilma. So Tom lives on the farm and continuously gathers data on the plants and the environment. Wilma is the brains of the operation that converts Tom's data into a precise, multi-layered and evolving map of the field and each plant in it. And together, we call that per plant intelligence. Now, Dick nurtures and protects the crop. He can return accurately to a specific plant and provide it with exactly what it needs. And Harry plants the crop at exactly the right depth and spacing for the conditions, giving it the best chance of the highest yields. And together, we call that per plant action. Now, Tom, Dick and Harry are not separate robots. They're essentially built from the same modular platform, a robotic architecture, if you like, that shares 80% of its hardware, 90% of the electronics and all of the deployed software between them. So we can mount a camera boom to make it a Tom. We can mount precision sprayers or non-chemical weeding for Dick or precision planting mechanisms for Harry. 
And that pl uh, platform is simply and massively scalable and can be expanded so that one robot can cover 8,000 acres. And these aren't prototypes. The new platform is robust and reliable and heavily tested and type approved. And they're being manufactured right now to serve our 2022 winter wheat customers. And at the heart of all this is the quality of the data that we collect. So we collected a pixel size of six one thousandths of an inch with a focus on image stability and lighting control. And this we do now with RGB cameras, but we'll soon be rolling out infrared and hyperspectral as well. And these images we feed through multiple neural networks so that we can see everything. We can see the variation in plant density and the size of every plant. We can see early stage stresses caused by nutrient deficiency and even the spottest, uh, smallest uh, cotyledon weed as it emerges through the crop plants. And we're trialing additional sensors to be able to detect a disease and soil health as well. And as you can imagine, this allows a completely new way of thinking about cereal farming. But to start with, we are aiming at the line items that our customers care most about, which is weeds, and fertility. So our weed detection has really a huge uh, impact on the amount of herbicide that needs to be used in field. Not just the easy green on brown detection that you see at the start of the season, but the tougher challenge of green on green when the weeds are all mixed up in the crop plant. So this map of a field shows the reality of post-emergent weeds in the field. We've mapped every single one, and then we've converted that map into a spray regime, which the farmer can then put into their existing sprayer for this season uh, and roll it out, saving 97% of their herbicide application. And when we roll out uh, the Dick robot to do precision spraying, we will be able to reduce that by a further five or 10 times. Now, nutrient application is often described to us by agronomists and farmers as a kind of a guesswork. So even NDVI and GAI can't really differentiate the difference between a crop plant and a weed, and they can't tell when nutrients are being wasted. You can't tell where plants are too far apart or too crowded to be able to benefit from those nutrients. Too far apart, a nitrogen, for example, will just hit the ground or cause a crop plant to overshoot so that the wheat nutrient level drops too low for milling wheat. But if they're too crowded, then they just compete with each other and all you're paying for is to produce leaf and stem. So we can provide an exact guide to the distribution and the size of the plants in field and we can see how they're growing. So right now this allows us to save around about 15% of nitrogen application, but our new models are showing up to 60%. And we can also go back into the field and see the impact of each application, allowing farmers to vary future applications based on hard data. Now, for the winter wheat, uh, winter wheat season this season, starting in September in the UK, our per plant intelligence service, allowing us to provide data for existing sprayers, will be generating around about $100 an acre in savings. As we roll out new sensors around disease, this increases to about $220 per acre. But as we roll out per plant action, this will extend the value, providing up to $500 per acre of value in terms of increased yields and decreased inputs. Now, we're clear about our core markets. We've done extensive interviews with farmers in the UK and then with the plains, uh, in the Plains States of Canada. And so we're focusing on delivering them to them first. So we've modeled the costs on the farm in the UK very carefully, and we understand the cost of cereal production. We know now that prices are really crazy, and it's unlikely uh, that things are going to return to normal, but we know that the new normal um, is uh, going to be different. So ultimately, we believe these numbers are reflective of where things need to go. And we've modeled our revenues on a fixed revenue share, and we've worked that through with our farmers through seven iterations of working on our pricing model, so they know um, that they are happy with this, and we can show them value. And we've also worked closely with large-scale Canadian plains farmers this year, and we're developing a faster, lower-cost version of our service that fits their cost model. Our modular approach allows for those bigger robots to work more effectively at scale, so reducing the cost per acre. So we've got a very strong mission and a really high tech for good focus, and that's allowed us to recruit some of the best talent in the UK. So we've been able to hire and retain and motivate a really high performance senior team of engineers from places like JCB and Caterpillar and Formula One, managers from Dyson and Virgin Galactic, and data science lead from DeepMind. We've empowered these people to perform independently, so they're really bringing their full expertise to what we're doing. So we ultimately, we don't yet have a board, but we have a non-direct 
a, a, a non-exec board that consists of people who have done what we're trying to achieve, from the C-suite of Starship Robotics to a product lead who used to manage X's robotics team. Most importantly, I take weekly advice and feedback from the most important people who are our farmer advisory group. They're a group of engaged farmer investors and customers who make sure that we're delivering what they need, not what we think is cool. So small robot company really helps farmers to defeat those triple threats by reducing costs, by improving yields, and by actively supporting the regenerations of soils. So at the moment, we have a three-year waiting list for our service, and we're now ramping up production to be able to deliver per plant farming to the world's biggest crops. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. Certainly did find that interesting. Um, now we have some time for some Q&A. So uh, a couple ways to ask Ben questions. Um, perhaps the easiest way would be to type in uh, a question into the bottom of your Zoom app. There's a Q&A icon if you go to there and type a question in. Uh, alternatively, you can raise your hand. Uh, actually, that might be the easiest. Raise your hand um, and I can unmute you and you can ask Ben a question directly. So a couple options uh, you have here. Um, but Ben, I guess to get things started, can you, can you talk about your uh, kind of the competitive advantage? I know this is, uh, you know, robotics and farming is a, um, is a growing uh, is a growing space. Um, how do you compare to some of the other uh, competitors or uh, others in this space? Um, so uh, I guess it sort of breaks down into into three specific areas. Uh, the first one is you know our focus on making sure um, that the data that we're collecting is of high enough quality that we can derive some serious outcomes from running it through an AI. Um, there's a, 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 an expression about what happens when you put uh, something into the system and what you get out the other side. And um, ultimately, we've designed the whole process, the whole robotic system, the boom, the cameras, everything about making sure that the quality is really good. And that ultimately allows us to derive a lot of outcomes uh, from the image we, we collect. So this is why we've got a very uh, a high focus on, on the GSD, on the pixel size, but also on the lighting, on the clarity of the image, et cetera, uh, to make that work. Um, the second thing I think is around this sort of continuous view of what's happening in the field. So our Tom robot will ultimately be going out you know, every two weeks or so to be able to see uh, what's in field. Uh, and that allows us to build up this sort of time series of the plants as they grow over the course of the season, uh, and then to be able to, to treat them and look after them accordingly. So this isn't something that you can do uh, from uh, mounting the uh, cameras, for example, on a, on a tractor, uh, because, you know, you're not going out that often. And it's very difficult to be able to gather the sort of data that we're um, uh, looking at, because, you know, we're very close to the ground, uh, we can see stuff that happens underneath the canopy, uh, and there's um, just generally that sort of frequency of view and that sort of time series uh, allows us to um, be able to do things like um, see and predict disease very quickly. And the third part is about this full integration between the uh, data collection and the action. You know, it, to be able to go back to individual plants in a wheat field where there may be four inches apart uh, and to be able to treat that individual plant, uh, take into account the vagarities of uh, GPS and, and, and different um, uh, sort of challenges you might have around the weather and all the rest of it, you know, is a, an extremely challenging thing. But only if you do that, can you really start to, for example, pick out patient zero in a disease outbreak in a field or to be able to target individual plants? Um, so really, I suppose those, those are the sort of the three core elements, but, but tied together, the fact that we have uh, something which uh, is incredibly lightweight, that doesn't compact the soil, uh, which doesn't really um, allow the soil to be churned up, has massive benefits both in terms of regeneration of the soil, um, but also obviously um, uh, being able to do things like maintain and lock in carbon. Thanks for that, Ben. Can you talk a little bit about uh, your sales cycle and some of the most common resistance that that's, that farmers either express to you or or in their kind of dragging their feet? What what are they looking for? What sort of proof points are they looking for? And and the and speaking of your sales cycle would be uh, very interesting. So um, our sales cycle is sort of broken up into, into six monthly chunks, I suppose. Uh, so our, our core audience in the UK is um, winter wheat, uh, winter crop farmers, uh, and their year tends to start in uh, September uh, and then go through to June. Uh, and then obviously for spring crops, that tends to start sort of February, March, uh, and then go through to sort of 
uh, uh, August or so. Um, and uh, what we found when we're, we're working with farmers is that they really want to see you know, the, the benefits. You know, we're talking about some big numbers in terms of savings, in terms of yield benefits, et cetera. And they want to see where we're getting that from, what the proof points are. So, you know, for us, um, obviously, we take them through what we're doing. Uh, we demonstrate it. They come down to our, our farm to be able to, to uh, see what's there. Um, and then we can show them directly the information from the farm, uh, uh, from the fields that we're working in uh, and, and how we're driving benefit from that. But I think that, you know, the way that we're working with our farmers is around a sort of pod model. So we are um, uh, recruiting a group of farmers in a geographical uh, area, uh, and then we're working with them to be able to deliver um, a, uh, a, a small um, sort of test sample for, for the first year where we can show that value and then expanding it over time. And we do that um, through a, a five-year contract with them. And the great thing about working like that is, one, um, those farmers uh, get to trust us uh, and get to understand what we're doing, and we're sort of taking them on a journey with us. But the other thing is that, you know, when other people see the robots in field, they want to know what's going on, and they come to have a look. And that actually allows for a sort of uh, um, the classic sort of garden gate or farm gate, rather, sort of view uh, of what's going on. So we tend to find that the farmers who come to us that we haven't necessarily approached or not already are working with tend to be the ones who have seen the benefits on other farmers in the area. Uh, in terms of other resistance, I think that, you know, the, the, the challenge around um, using uh, autonomous vehicles is one of those ones that actually the majority of farmers we working with feel relatively comfortable with. You know, obviously, they've seen many years of uh, seeing auto steer coming on board and they understand uh, how that works. Uh, and I think that, you know, once they realize that our small robots are not small, but can cover the same sort of area that a tractor can, uh, then they can really see the value. And, you know, the comments we get back are, you know, once you realize, you know, that you don't have to have a cab, you don't have to have all that excess weight, and you can strip it down to the bare minimum, that you can really see uh, that the sort of stuff that we're producing uh, can do the job just as well as a tractor can. Thanks for that perspective, Ben. Um, very interesting. Um, so assuming we, we do this webinar series next year, let's, let's say June of 2023, some more theme, where, where, where would you want to be? What's, what do the next 12, 18 months look like for you? What's a, what, is a, what is hitting it out of the park look like for you over the next 12, 18 months? Um, so uh, for the uh, initial sales that we needed to achieve this year, we've um, sold to 50 farmers in the UK uh, that are broken off, uh, broken up across sort of eight pods. Um, and we are um, starting to work with uh, Canadian farmers to be able to uh, sort of gather data and build pods there. Um, I think that what will really sort of knock it out the park for us um, is one, uh, that those farmers are expanding uh, the, the, the hectares they're covering, hopefully to cover the entire farm, which would force us to ramp up quite fast. Um, and the work that we're doing uh, in Canada uh, allows us to scale uh, rapidly there as well. Uh, I think in terms of our sort of geographical focus, we're staying quite tight to those areas because you know, it's, it's challenging as a small business to be able to support uh, and deliver the infrastructure uh, around hardware, around robotics, around AI, et cetera, across a large area. So the, the focus for us is really trying to sort of build up in those areas. The other thing that we found, which is absolutely fascinating, is because we have this sort of real precision view um, that a lot of the, um, the big ag corporates, particularly ag chemical companies, um, have approached us about whether or not um, they can use our capability to be able to monitor their um, R&D capabilities, and particularly in being able to monitor test plots and then monitor in-field trials that they're doing at the same level of resolution. So we have a number of those lined up at the moment, um, but as you, I'm sure you're aware, they sort of work on, on annual sales cycles. So what we think to have knocked it out of the park is that we will have landed all six of the top 10 uh, ag chemical companies that we're currently talking to at the moment, uh, and we're delivering to their trial plots as well. Fantastic. Well, if there are no questions from the audience here, uh, Ben, the last thing we'd like to ask is how can the audience, both live and listening retroactively, how can they help you and, and how can they get in contact with you? So um, we, as you gathered, we take a very sort of a user-centered approach to what we're doing. Uh, and it's very important that we are speaking to and engaging with farmers in different places around the world um, so that we can understand what their particular pain points are and problems in their area. Um, whether that's, you know, sort of understanding how, whether our model works for them, whether there are other things that we should be doing or things that they think are unnecessary, or even down to the basics of understanding, you know, what their weed pressure is, the issues they've got around uh, fertility or disease. Uh, 
And so we can start planning and understanding how to go into those areas. You know, we need to understand the areas we're going into um, in advance so that we can make sure we can deliver a service you know, when we first hit the ground uh, in a particular country or a particular state. Um, so we are um, very keen to, to engage around that. Um, if uh, um, there are people here who are looking to get involved in the company, um, then we are um, very up for, for having a chat around that too. Uh, and in fact, we are um, entering a funding round now. Great. Well, Ben, thank you so much for joining us today and, and telling us the uh, the story and congratulations on all the progress and, and best of luck uh, with the remainder of 2022. And to those in attendance, thank you for joining. To those listening retroactively, thank you for tuning in uh, to the replay. And um, a replay for those listening live will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours. And uh, please feel free to share with your friends if you know they're interested in, in robotics or uh, this this segment of agriculture. New viewers can register for agri-food conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. So again, Ben, thank you very much. And hopefully we will uh, see you next week for another, um, for we, hopefully we'll see everyone else next week for another uh, webinar on, on uh, AI and, and ML and, and agriculture. So everyone have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.